Welcome back to Child Time Pod. It's your host, Red. Got a video today from Dating Right. Women have weaponized Me Too to the point where men are ignoring them in the workplace. Men don't even want to deal with women. They don't even want to mentor women or be in the same room with women at work anymore because they're so scared of being accused of bad, horrible men patriarchy things. Please like, subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. Let's get to that, Chow. It's Chow time. Many people, including myself, only became aware of the Me Too movement in 2017 when Rose McGowan, a white wealthy woman who was a famous actress, brought it up. But it was actually started all the way back in 2006 by Tarana Burke, an African-American social activist. Women of color have been speaking up about sexual abuse in low-income workspaces for ages, but they never garnered the same attention as a rich white actress. Well, isn't this awesome? Due to the hard work and efforts of feminism in the Me Too movement has made men not only be extra careful working with women in the workplace, but it is making men not even want to work with women. There's been some backlash about Me Too. We have plenty of stories of men not wanting to be alone. I, I get them down. I get so many stories of work stories of men avoiding women in the workplace just because the sheer detriment that it could be for us men just to mess up or just not pay attention to some of these things and some anxiety as you might imagine many many male managers and owners um, are feeling a little bit more tentative when working with and, and managing their female workers listen to this a side result an unintended consequence of the me too movement has popped up male executives and managers some are now saying they are afraid to work with and mentor female colleagues in the workplace so we're trying to find out is it too hard to see the difference between mentoring and harassment listen i can't give any more information there's no difference between mentoring and harassing if it's, if the woman wants it to be. That's the issue with this. The women can make it any type of situation they want it to be by just them opening their mouths to HR. It could be a normal meeting and, 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 and nothing ever happened. But because they felt a way about it, they're going to go to HR and then boom, now we're in the hot seat, got fired, you know, investigation going on. Uh, but I fear I may have girl boss a bit too close to the sun. A large percentage of male managers were concerned about working with women one on one in the workplace. They were concerned about mentoring women. They were saying they were afraid to have meetings with women, to travel with women, and so on. And these and the other side of women always want to say, oh, because these men have these intentions and that's why they feel that way. No, no. We've seen plenty of good men with great intentions helping out, but because the woman felt the way about it, the motherfucker got fired, and now he's in the streets because some woman felt the way about how he helped her. It indicates that there are anxieties and fears that we need to address. The way that men are reacting to the Me Too movement is absolutely correct. Ladies, for every action, there is a reaction. And it's not just happening in the workplace. It's happening on college campuses and universities. So a paper came out recently that looked Ooh. at the effect of the Me Too movement on academia. And it actually shows that post Me Too, women's productivity fell largely due to fewer collaborations with male researchers. What? You guys can't do your job without us men giving you some kind of help or assistance or teach you guys something? Shocker! <laughs> the paper shows that this drop is most pronounced at universities where the perceived risk of sexual harassment accusations is highest. So the actual findings comparing research before and after the movement are right here. And as you can see, after the Me Too movement, collaborations with male researchers inside the same institution fell to close to zero. Oh, the damn. Felt that men feel like if they accidentally say the wrong thing, they could be canceled or fired. And this isn't just in academia. The paper also cites a 2018 study which showed that 60% of male managers are uncomfortable participating in common activities with women due to the same concerns and a curious you know I, like i told you guys there's a companies some companies now that literally have two christmas parties they have a male christmas party and a female christmas party because they already know shit's gonna go down and they don't want to deal with it that's like so companies are, se are segregating people nowadays the finding of the study was that men make up for the loss in this collaboration by just collaborating more with other men, whereas mm. women don't make up for it at all. But tonight, one retired... 
because they're not willing to work with other women. Women boss babes are the worst type of bosses in the world. <laughs> CEO is speaking out about why he thinks this might end up having the wrong effect on women in the workforce. Steve, Trisha, while well, this new wave of women standing up against sexual misconduct has led to all sorts of changes, but tonight one CEO believes it may be preventing women from getting the jobs they want. Mm -hmm. From the entertainment industry to the gaming world, women everywhere are standing up against sexual misconduct in the workplace. And I'm not against it because there was a lot of unsavory things back in those days in Hollywood and gaming and even nowadays. So I, I'm, I'm not 100 percent against, you know, how these women act. I'm just 100 percent against at how it could be weaponized by so many other women by just saying certain things. It's a new and it's even worse, actually, because the woman might not even feel a way about it. But then another woman sees what happens and forces that woman to report it to HR because she knows what that woman can get out of it. The, the greediness of women. Day. It is the era of the woman now. The latest case has brought this movement right to the Las Vegas Strip. Casino mogul Steve Wynn stepping down as CEO yesterday after allegations he sexually assaulted employees. But is time really up? I have a big concern. <clears throat> and it's what's going to happen in hiring going forward. Mark Yosiloff is the director of UNLV's School of Gaming and Innovation and hired hundreds of men and women as former CEO of Shufflemaster. He says this movement will make it tougher for women to get hired, especially when they're up against a qualified man. They might elect to hire the man because they are concerned that down the road, whether they do anything wrong or not, there might be a she said, he said. Yoslav says That's a good thing. Now they're actually going off of experience and qualifications instead of, oh, she looks like a woman. She looks pretty good. Even though she doesn't fully qualify, we'll still hire her. And then she'll cause issues by me tooing every other man around her so she can get ahead in life. Current CEOs he knows have already opted not to sit in meetings alone with women in fear they would do something to spark a complaint. It's a craziness that no executive wants to have to face and these managers got every right to feel this way it's because true. this is what's been going on men have been falsely accused in the workplace and these women asked for this and now these companies got to think about the fact that feminist women in your workplace can cost companies millions or even billions in lawsuits what i mean we're seeing that now there's so many woke companies that are firing off their woke employees firing off their gender like managers or whatever and all those things because they're useless and it just causes more issues within the company women ask for so if you're in the workplace and somebody puts their hand on your waist and it's unwanted and you go to human resources the person who did that could be accused of sexual assault now if you get any man on the street y'all don't agree at all okay so if you're in the workplace and somebody puts their hand on your waist and it's unwanted and you go to human resources, the person who did that could be accused of sexual assault. Easy. Now, if you get any man on the street or any man or woman on the street and say to them, so-and-so was convicted of sexual assault, in that person's mind, that's the same as rape. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so, yes, there are a, a tremendous number of, of levels that are going to differentiate the seriousness between the hand on the waist, which is unwanted mm -hmm. and should be should should be dealt with if, if somebody touches you in a way that you're not comfortable with you should say to that person oh, 100 percent agree comfortable with you touching me this way the me too movement in 2017 raised awareness to numerous stories of sexual abuse of women in the workplace and not only was the movement successful in exposing individuals like harvey weinstein it even had an impact on public policy but like anything the pendulum swings both ways Despite its success, the Me Too movement promoted extreme slogans such as Believe All Women, and along with it created a climate of fear where innocent men were unfairly accused and reputations destroyed. And the most notable was the John- We see it nowadays with Jonathan Mayer and all these other big, powerful movie stars that have a lot of money to battle. And they're still getting destroyed and trounced, getting fired left and right. Johnny Depp Amber Heard case where Heard wrote an op-ed alleging that she was a victim of abuse. And it wasn't until four years after getting canceled from everything when Depp won the defamation trial for the false allegations. Do you 
There's just a scandal that came out. This woman falsely accused several young men of doing something to her. These young men tried to delete themselves because it was absolutely a lie. Now, evidence came out recently where she went to the store, bought a hammer, beat herself. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. These I, young I, I, men, I if it wasn't for... And, and 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 people are like why would and women always want to say why would i hurt myself why would i do these things you women do some of the craziest shit to get what you want period for other men coming around and supporting these young men and just because she was a woman she was believed and i'm not saying that doesn't happen i actually come from a family that's happened but i still know several stories of women who have falsely accused ruined these young men's lives and guess what you know what society says after that that young woman this is one woman who was finally held accountable because of her lies and destroying their life but do you know what happened those young men most of them who have been falsely accused they lose their scholarship use their jobs they lose their everything and then there's nothing that's said if it goes away and it wasn't true you never hear accountability you never hear any woman go to jail for false accusing those there men needs to be a law for it. it happens at work they don't even question that shit at work you automatically get put on suspension or you might even be let go immediately while they're going over through the all this investigation and stuff so you've already been proven guilty in a sense and they're just waiting to get all the proof to you know fully book you it looks like the world owes trevor bauer a big apology trevor was able to finally vindicate himself and prove what he had been saying all along that he was innocent and that this woman his accuser was nothing more than a liar and bauer's evidence was a bombshell next victim star pitcher for the dodgers a text lindsey hill sent to a friend before she ever even met me then after the first time we met net worth is 51 mil bitch you better secure the bag was the response but how was she going to do that need daddy to choke me out she said being an absolute whore to try to get in on his 51 million the women 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 interesting part no one for a second questioned her story i have to ask what does that say about our society and its attitudes towards men that they are all deemed to be scumbags if a woman says so the me too movement which originally gave way to give a voice to actual victims has now transformed into a manipulative tactic for women to make excuses for their own degenerate and immoral behavior and the me too movement it's clear it means nothing anymore except to strip innocent men of their power i am so sick of this idea by that we should always accept that in every situation a woman is a victim. I'm not empowered by that. I don't nope. find that to be empowering, right? The Me Too movement to me disempowered women because it said women never know what they're doing. They just are always little flowers and men take advantage. The truth is that women take advantage too. And the easiest thing for women to sell to get what they want is sex, right? This is what Tag the Sponsor proves. I want to be rich. I want to have money and I don't want to work. So I'm going to sell sex. I have no talent and I want to be an actress, so I'm going to sell sex. Sex is a power that women have. Being beautiful is a power. Being aesthetic, being feminine is a power that women have, and women tend to wield that power heavily throughout society. Back in the days, you know, um, most of the time, you would wait for someone to make the first move. It might be on the first date, it might be the third date, whatever. It right. could be the man, it could be the woman. But now, all my friends have noticed that the man has stopped making the first move. All my girlfriends are like- Yeah, cause of women like you, Jeannie Mai. To the women like you. Like, they're waiting, it's the third day, fourth date, a week later, he hasn't gone in for the kiss, he doesn't do any touching or anything, and I've asked my dude friends that are single, right. and they were like, you don't know where a woman's gonna go with that story, and where I ain't touching nobody. Damn right. Oh, oh, so I have heard that. So, yeah, yeah I have heard so that. something going on out there, and it, and it kind of, it sucks, because the Me Too movement is so strong and so so powerful for the people that need it, but it shouldn't ruin the maturity that we should have within intimacy and relationships. And it's actually something that's very unfortunate too, because this is further going to hit the marriage rate numbers because a man and a woman used to end up getting married because they usually met at their job. They met at work. So this is definitely going to block a lot of potential relationships and marriages or whatever from happening like that in the future because that's how a lot of couples ended up meeting each other. And also, that's how a lot of couples ended up cheating on their spouse. This is true. Place as well. <laughs> no means no. That's another one. No means no. It's like, no, it doesn't. All right? This look, is true. Look, no means no. No, that means no. All right, but no, stop it. What are you doing? Oh my God. I get that a lot. You're being so bad. Stop it. No. Yeah, that's not a fucking 
no. That means I want to do it, but I'm afraid you're going to judge me, so I'm just going to make it look like it was your idea so you don't figure out that I've already performed this act with 40 other fucking people. Right? <laughs> but then, then you go to court and you get a bad read and there's some guy reading it. Oh, your Honor, she said no. Stop it. What are you doing? You're being so bad. <laughs> And you just sit there like, she didn't fucking say it like that! She didn't say it like that! <laughs> it's true. For teenage boys now, they are so terrified of the uh, consequences of putting a foot out of line. It's hard enough being a young teenager working out how things are working out how to do dating and all of that without i do feel bad for all the young men out there that really are being born into this or like being raised into this they literally have no idea what to do they're like confused if even they can approach women if they're gonna get sexually like you know accused or anything they're completely lost and they're the weaker set of men so they don't have the balls or that that experience in life yet to understand what the hell to do and what's going on the terror that if you touch in the wrong place at the wrong time you may find that your whole life is destroyed See, I and like there is that far terror. too much well i i, I like that as a I mother think of a teenage boy i don't like really? that terror i do the thing I've ever heard. That is i think that men should be frightened i think to you touch feel differently if you they're were, not comfortable if you were. with but we're talking about yeah, but teenagers. we're not talking about we're not talking about, about, we're talking yeah, about it's young an interesting children. thing that you see i would say that that attitude actually is part of the problem agreed too. that is, is top that's to me toxic femininity is. that is saying you should all be terrified you men if you put one I'm assaulting well i i i think we all understand what sexual what assault, is an assault is what isabel's talking about is that young teenage clumsiness really in many hard. cases which is now being recategorized as assault is that a problem not being re look at her smile and smirk that shit kind of just irked me right now like this fucking dirty whore wanting to just call even little boys fucking predators categorizes assault it's always been assault it's just we're finally talking about i don't agree it. with that but i do think it's really hard for 16 17 year old boy now in this environment to know even how to they're start all, they are all having terrified. kind of some kind of physical relationship with a woman those good boys are all terrified i know that from talking to my and and that's it that's the problem the good boys the good boys are the ones that have the most issue with this because they are the most rigid with their rules. They follow it to the T. And when good boys follow rules to the T, they don't know what to do when it comes to this. The bad boys that don't give a fuck about touching girls and doing whatever the fuck they want, they're going to just keep doing what the fuck they want. So this actually just prevented good boys, good men to be able to grow properly and like exercise their social abilities properly when the shitty guys the players the not so savory types have been doing this this whole time they never cared that's the problem my son he's just like i'm just not going there is that healthy yes I oh man that music right there was tripping me out but i'm gonna stop the video right there you guys drop a comment down below let me know what you think about this me too movement that has now backfired on women what laws do you guys think should be put in place i think all workplaces should be required to have audio and listening equipment in the workplace that we can just clear up any misunderstanding we can hear everything that was said and just really get to the bottom of the truth or the lie but don't forget to hit that subscribe button shout out to dating right awesome chow b2 men Get your passports. I didn't mention it throughout the whole video, but the solution to this is your passport. You leave this country because of the laws of this country, so just set up such against men. As much as I love this country, I really can't say and tell normal average guys it's best to stay here. I really can't. It's best to make as much money as you can because the money is here, the opportunity is here, and then go somewhere else to find a nice life, a nice family. Please like, subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.